Hi, this is Charles with Anicap. Today's video is part one of my recap of the 2022 anime, The Executioner and Her Way of Life. We are almost at 50,000 subscribers, so please consider subscribing. Thank you. The story begins after a boy named Mitsuki is summoned to another world. He has seen these types of anime before and thinks about how he is now the main character and will no longer be overlooked. His optimism is short-lived, however, as he is instantly kicked out. He has no money and briefly considers stealing food, but doesn't want his parents to find out. He remembers he is lost, and wishes his parents actually did. He is found by a girl who calls him a lost one, knowing that he is from another world. She introduces herself as Menno, a pure, just, and strong priestess. She knows he needs money and says her church takes in lost ones. Mitsuki references his knowledge of this type of anime and asks if there are any demon lords or heroes in this world. She says no. He then assumes that he has to use knowledge of his advanced world to stand out and make a name for himself in this world. She reveals that the Lost Ones have been coming to her world for a while and their culture has already been incorporated. Menno assumes that Grazerica, the king of the nation, is committing the taboo of summoning Lost Ones. She explains that there are three classes. Commons, which are everyday people that make up 90% of the population. Nobles, who are in charge of government, like royalty, including King Grazerica and above all are the Faust, those of the church that serve the Lord. They are also the ones in charge of regulating anyone that violated taboo. Mitsuki teases her for being lowest of the Faust considering she has been tasked with helping a nobody like him. He explains that he was examined and it was found that his powers were null. He also mentions that he saw another person get summoned during his attempt at running away. Menno is very interested in this information and sends a transmission to someone. He says it makes sense that he would be powerless considering how he has never been very special, but she says the Lost Ones always end up having some type of power and the powers they possess are referred to as pure concept. Later, she reveals that the church doesn't actually have any money, but if he ends up having a good power, it might be able to make money. She wants to help him get his power out and asks him to say the words etheric connect. It works and Mitsuki is amazed to see that his power isn't null, but it is actually the ability to nullify anything. He is ready to see what he can do with his power, but will not get the chance after getting stabbed by Mino. She explains that he is not to blame and did nothing to deserve death. She acknowledges that she is the villain and he is the victim, explaining Lost Ones have just brought too much harm to their world. Her true duty is as an executioner for exterminating Lost Ones. In a brief moment, she explains an odd dream in a Japanese school where she is friends with everyone, and one mysterious figure is actually her best friend. Elsewhere, a girl explains a dream she has of a faraway world where she meets a precious someone, and wonders if this world she has been brought to is it. Later, Menno speaks to the Archbishop and says after confirming some information, she will make her attempt at infiltrating the king's castle. They speak of the past and how last time Menno was there 10 years ago, an otherworlder went out of control. The Archbishop is glad she was able to save Menno, who was the lone survivor, and also gives credit to someone named Flair. In her memory of her rescue, Menno is left under the care of Flair, who says she is a pure, just, and strong priestess. Moments later, her aide Momo arrives, and it becomes very clear that she has an unhealthy obsession for Menno. She confirms that the other lost one is in the king's castle, and she found her exact location. Momo says the mission will require her to go undercover using one of Flair's inventions. However, Momo takes advantage of the moment by taking an image of her, and a chase ensues. Their fun is interrupted when they notice royal knights have arrived outside. They explain that the church should have been satisfied with taking the one lost one, but that they became too greedy looking for the second, and she realizes that the king must have summoned two lost ones in the hopes of tricking them. They say it was necessary as they only want to obtain a great power to overthrow the Faust's tyrannical rule. A fight breaks out and Menno uses a combination of swordplay and magic to handle them. One of the knights recognizes her skillful use of her attacks and assumes her to be the mighty Flair. She explains that she is Flair's successor, her Flairette. The guard can't understand how someone so powerful would choose to worship the Lord and she explains that the monsters they keep summoning are far worse. After they are defeated, we get a glimpse of the other lost one as she realizes that she is being held captive in the castle. Later, we see that Menno has infiltrated the castle and is thankful of the good disguise. She finds the Lost One and thinks about how she is the one she will have to execute. The Lost One explains her name to be Akari. After some more confirmation, Menno explains that the other boy that had been summoned told her about Akari. She lies by saying he ran away from the castle and came to her church, but she was not able to rescue him as he was too badly injured. 
Menno says that she at least wanted to be able to save her and asks if anyone had told her about a power she might have. Akari reveals that she had been told she has a pure concept that allows her to heal people. Menno tells her that they want to use her pure concept for evil, so they must run, and Akari says she believes her. As they run, Menno figures this is her chance and attacks her from above. However, Akari's ability activates, healing her as if nothing happened. She assumes she must have just fallen, and Menno tries to understand what just happened. She realizes that her wound didn't just heal, but completely disappeared, and that her bloodstains did as well. She then wonders what if she actually has the pure concept of time, and frantically decides to take Akari with her. Later, Menno reports to the Archbishop about the girl. She says that if her power is really time regression, that it could have immense disastrous potential if it were to ever develop stronger. Explaining that pure concepts eat away at the mind, eventually taking over and causing otherworlders to rage out of control. She believes Akari's power could cause a catastrophe worse than what they call the four major human errors. The Archbishop tells Menno to bring her to where she is, a place called Garm, since they have a ceremonial hall that can eliminate any otherworlder. The next day, Menno explains that they will need to travel somewhere safe and Akari fantasizes about their potentially epic journey. However, Menno explains the trip will only take a couple days. She lies by saying that there, they are able to return otherworlders back home. Akari gets a bit sad as she explains that after meeting Menno, it seemed as if the time had started moving again after a long pause. She admits to not understanding why that is the case, but regardless, she is glad to have met Menno, claiming it to be fate. Later, Momo explains that King Grzerica is on trial for heresy, which will keep the nobles busy. She is wary of the time Menno is spending with Akari, who she refers to as Boobalicious, and recommends they just poison her. However, Menno explains that it would only lead to damaging her mind and perhaps her raging out of control. Furthermore, they can't try killing her unless the odds of success are high, as there is the potential for her pure concept to get stronger after every use. Momo is still uneasy and would like to do the job for her instead. But Menno says that is out of the question, explaining that having to kill someone who hasn't violated a taboo or committed a crime, who's just a nice ordinary person, is her job. Momo then agrees to just follow them and hide herself from Akari. At the train station, Menno explains that the trains run on particles of etheric light, and that the ether is the foundation of the world's civilization. It is also the power that drives magecraft, which she says anyone can use with enough training. She reveals that Akari is special because she can use magecraft without the help of tools or any training. Menno goes to get some food for them when Akari spots a lost girl and offers to heal her wound. Menno notices a couple knights from the castle and that Akari is about to use her pure concept, which they will surely notice. She creates a harmless distraction and stops Akari, scolding her about almost attracting too much attention. Akari notices the bubbles and scolds Menno for the same reason. The little girl is impressed and Menno shows her how it works. They begin to board the train and Akari teases her about how adorable it was when she was showing off for the little girl. Just then, Princess Ashuna arrives to the crowd's astonishment. The knights explain that they have come after her, but she says she won't be going back and reveals she will be going to Garm. Akari continues to be excited about their journey and Menno thinks to herself that she should enjoy the trip, because when they arrive, the only thing that awaits is the end of her life. Elsewhere on the train, Ashuna laments her father's actions just as a group of armed men take over the train. Menno explains to Akari how the guns they are using are etheric guns, and they are illegal. One of them approaches the two, explaining how priestesses can be very dangerous, and commands Menno undressed to reveal any weapons. As she prepares to do so, Akari stops her, saying she will do it in her place. Menno decides no one will have to undress, and takes care of the armed men in their part of the train. She scolds Akari for trying to protect her, but thanks her anyway. Menno heads out to secure the rest of the train, and Akari tells her to make sure she is careful as she doesn't want to be alone anymore. Elsewhere, Momo beats some answers out of one of the men, and reports to Menno that they intend to take Ashuna hostage and use her to demand the release of their captured terrorist leader. Momo then heads to the engine room and runs into Ashuna. They introduce themselves, and Ashuna can't help but appreciate the alterations Momo has done to her priestess uniform. She is glad Momo has shown up, as she would like to ask her a question. She begins her attack, and wonders if the other worlders her father summoned have been eliminated by the infamous executioners of the Faust, who Momo denies even exist. She determines that if an executioner had finished her job and left the royal capital, they would probably be on that train. 
She commends her fighting ability and taunts Momo a bit, leading her to finally activate her weapon. Meno arrives at the engine room to see that the operators are fine, crediting Princess Ashuna. Two of the captured men explain that they will be hung anyway and were told to swallow special gems in case the plan had gone wrong. The gems consume them from within and combine, eventually mutating into a monstrous armored knight. Meno battles the brute and says she is just glad it didn't manifest into an angel or a dragon. Above the train, Ashuna teases Momo about how all she has managed to do is evade attacks. The two continue to exchange taunts and Momo finally manages to gain the upper hand, knocking Ashuna off the train only to be taken with. Luckily for Meno, Momo's weapon pierces through the train and strikes the knight. We briefly see that the two that fell off the train are okay but are preparing for more fighting. The armored knight strikes the train's control valve and Meno knows it will cause the train to go out of control. As she continues to do battle, she notices a bizarre stutter in time, and we see that the pair fighting outside experience the same thing. Just then, Akari shows up and gets scolded for coming, and explaining that she was only following the red orbs. She was worried about Meno and expected her to be proud of her, which Meno says was a dumb thought. With Akari there, Meno decides to go to her last resort. She uses her blade to channel ether into the night, causing it to self-destruct. She wins the fight but the train is still out of control, and she can't use Magecraft because she used up too much ether. After some thought, she comes up with an idea, but knows it is against the rules and will require the help of Akari. Akari agrees as she feels she can always trust Meno. Atop the train, Meno gives Akari a stern look to help her calm down from her panic. However, she says it's not helping, so Meno gives a smile instead, which is nice but does not help either. Meno explains that she will need to borrow some of her ether and that it will hurt, explaining that the body reacts violently when connecting ethers between two people. Akari says she can handle it but worries about Meno. However, she explains that a long time ago she lost the most of who she was and can now make the connection without pain. Meno begins her magecraft and makes the connection. She is in amazement at the sheer amount of ether that otherworlders must possess and notices that Akari's body isn't reacting violently at all. They make one final push and manage to stop the train moments before hitting the town. After everyone is safe, Meno can't help but wonder what if she had failed to stop the train. Or maybe that did actually happen once. Maybe she died along with all the passengers and Akari simply turned back time. She can only wonder about how powerful Akari's pure concept might become. Thanks for watching part 1 of this series. Future parts will be linked in a pinned comment below.